Well, hey, Freunde des Lasergurkenlands, willkommen auf silihum.com. Ähm, ja, wir schauen uns heute ein spezielles Video an, und zwar von einem auf diesem Kanal unbekanntes Video, und zwar, ähm, also von diesem auf diesem Kanal unbekannten Kanal, <lacht> wenn man das so sagen kann, von dem Kanal Hack My Control System, ein Video von 2017 mit 800 Aufrufen mit dem Titel 5 ähm, Mod, äh, Modbus Security, Modbus and IoT, Man in the Middle. Boah, also das Intro ist hart. Das Intro ist echt hart. Harter Stoff. Harter Stoff. Our fifth episode focuses on how man-in-the-middle attacks can be leveraged to manipulate HMI views, Modbus TCP traffic, and even inject malicious payloads in users' web browsers. The latter technique being ripe for SOCs and control center dashboards. Man-in-the-middle attacks have been around for a while. Their purpose is to either cause traffic redirection to allow us to snip that traffic off the local LAN, to inject packets, or manipulate packets as they process through the attacker system, downgrade protocols, for example, going from SSL to HTTP, and even steal another user's session. There are many man-in-the-middle attacks. Uh, we're going to actually demonstrate a few of them, one of which is ARP cache poisoning, ICMP redirect, which requires a gateway IP address and supported by both BetterCap and EtherCap, SSL to HTTP downgrade, and then we'll demonstrate how to harvest some credentials from the uh, victim's browser. After the demo, we'll go ahead and talk about some countermeasures as they pertain to Modbus and IoT devices. The tools we'll be using predominantly are BetterCap, the browser exploitation framework, old and reliable TCP dump, Wireshark, and a hex editor. I have assembled a very simplistic topology to demonstrate these attack vectors. First, we have our web switch acting as our Modbus server and providing an HMI dashboard for easy monitoring and configuration. Opposite to that is a Windows 7 engineering workstation where the operator will be keeping an eye on the Modbus server via its web-based dashboard system. I used an open WRT router simply to make addressing faster for this demonstration. All devices are connected to a ruggedized Garrettcom Layer 2 unmanaged switch. The attacker system is a typical Kali box connected directly to the local LAN. However, this doesn't have to be just an attacker as seen by the icons. For in fact, it could be malicious software on the system, a rogue device such as a uh, someone connecting a router, a wireless router to the uh, local LAN. And this happens at some substations because the operator doesn't want to have to get out of the truck in the middle of the rain, or the threats inherent to BYOD. The first step is we need to enable IP forwarding on the attacker's kernel. Otherwise, our system will simply receive traffic without passing it on. This would result in a service con uh, condition on our victim. We verify the setting using the cat command. Let's go ahead and take note of both the attacker's IP address, but more importantly, the subnet of the local LAN we are connected to. We'll also identify our gateway address. Now we can go ahead and execute ARP spoofing via BetterCap and enable its plugins in a single swoop. Go ahead and enable the sniffer, spoof ARP traffic, set up the web proxy, the HTTPS web proxy, provide it the interface, as well as our gateway. We'll log to the local directory, bettercap.log. And then enable the cookie, HTTPS, HTTP auth, SNMP, post, 
Intel Mass and DHCP plugins. I'm also going to go ahead and prep our TCP dump to go ahead and capture on the same interface. Set the snap length to zero, very verbose output. Don't do name resolution. Uh, let's specify the host is going to be our target web switch. Ich weiß nicht, wo den Video vielleicht nicht die ganze Zeit gegen Monster kämpfen und ich irgendwas mitbekommen. Das kann denn nur nervig sein. We see that we've identified the engineering workstation, his IP address. We've also identified the web switch, his Mac. At this point in time, I'm going to go ahead from the engineering workstation, go ahead and access the web switch's web interface see that connection and then we see a bunch of uh, state information being sent back from the web switch to the attacker machine or excuse me to the victim machine. We can go ahead and open uh, this particular capture within Wireshark. We've identi identified our HTML traffic. We can go ahead and follow that TCP stream. And this is going to give us the uh, all the HTML that was in the web switches GUI dashboard. Now we can go ahead and save this as the raw traffic because we want to actually extract this information and then recreate it in our browser. So we actually have a eyes on view to what the operator is seeing. We can go ahead and review. Um, our output and essentially we're just deleting the overhead, the header information, just a lot leaving us with the HTML. We can verify it's HTML using a file command, everything's great on PCAP. Then go ahead and open that in our web browser. And here we see the entire web switch GUI as presented to the operator, with the exception that some of the additional capabilities, for example, the uh, states, etc., are not are not viewable um, because they're not enabled on the web switch itself. So we actually get more information than these, even the operator sees. Uh, some of these are in fact enabled; others are not. Let's go ahead and look for that on button. Was ich habe einen Stack von denen. Oh, Welche Looting braucht er? Looting, okay. Und das provides, wie you can see, a much easier way to parse that output, that HTML, and identify the states. Here we see a 1-1 one, one and a 1-0. So outlet 1, a state of 1 for on. What's the sound What's What's the sound in? After the initial HTML is downloaded, um, that connection is still open, and those values are being continuously pulled. Uh, so the operator is presented with uh, the most recent um, data to ensure that the outlet has not turned off. If we follow the XML TCP stream, we can actually see that command being sent across. So each outlet has a state, one for on, what the zero fuck? for off. What 
we can do is essentially every time create a, a filter. So as it's being passed through us as the man in the middle, we will switch the states so anything that was originally on can now be viewed as off. So here's an example um, plugin from BetterCap written in Ruby. You can see the information where I obtained this. Made some modifications, but essentially all I'm doing is parsing the XML. looking for the relay state of 1 for outlet 1 and I am showing that as being off. All we need now is specify this a module. Dangerous, no? Yes, this is useless, Junge. Besser wird es nicht, glaube ich. Scheiß Teil. Go ahead and run it. Go ahead and recreate a random middle session. Identify the systems. And we see that that information is being passed. And our, our plugin is working. We can see the output message outlet one off. So now the victim is actually seeing this is being. Um, pass through us as being off when in fact it's on. We can verify that in Wireshark. If we look at the XML now, we see that our relay state is being passed through as zero. ICMP redirect. Since we've already specified our gateway, we just need to uh, change the spoof from ARP to ICMP. And Bob's your uncle. So unlike the ARP poisoning attack, the ICMP uh, attack is really just sending redirect messages uh, claiming that we have a better route than the actual router. And to demonstrate that it works, I went ahead and logged into the OpenWRT switch. We also see some additional Rockwell um, requests coming through from the engineering workstation, which is fantastic. Note that this was HTTPS, so by including the uh, HTTPS proxy module, we've in fact downgraded um, the authentication protocol from HTTPS to HTTP. We also see that we have uh, actually captured the password and username um, for this authentication as we downgraded from HTTP, to, uh, downgrade to HTTP from HTTPS, um, we were able to strip SSL, thus uh, presenting us the credentials in clear text. All right, so now we're going to try to recreate the control system logic by becoming a Modbus proxy. Um, to do this, we're going to be using MBT get. Um, so in order to pull the victim device, I'm going to go ahead and SSH in to another system on the local LAN. Uh, this is just one of the VMs we used earlier, but it has MBT get already set up, so we can go Oder ahead and start those commands uh, from the web switch. Das weiß ich jetzt natürlich nicht. The other alternative to this kommt. technique is to try to log the HMI via the web uh, scraping techniques we just showed. Um, we could capture multiple screenshots in successive or, uh, order um, using the interpreter session or just obtain remote access 
uh, to the box itself. As we're focused on Modbus, I'll demonstrate how to obtain the traffic using a simple man in the middle art spoofing attack. Um, we just need to ensure that obviously we've enabled IP kernel forwarding and our IP tables rules are cleared. Um, once we're ready, we'll have to set up a better cap uh, proxy specific for Modbus TCP originating from the web switch. Um, note that we're also capturing the network traffic. So the only difference here is I'm actually using the TCP proxy module, which allows us to specify um, the TCP port and victim. In this case, we're going to go ahead and use the web switch over Modbus port 502, sniff that traffic, and output that um, to a PCAP log for us. Go ahead and run. identified the virtual box machine. Uh, we execute the MPT script and look, we see the actual Modbus traffic going, Modbus TCP traffic going across the wire. Uh, that was a read uh, coil command. Let's go ahead and write coil. And if any of these um, techniques are foreign to you, we invite you to go ahead and watch our earlier video on Modbus enumeration. Yeah, this ganze video is foreign to me. Leute, ich habe ungefähr nichts so mitgenommen aus dem Video. And, uh, found that the state was off. Uh, we changed it by giving it a state of one, and then verified that with a recoil command. All is good. Now that we have uh, those packets, we can go ahead and shut this down, free up our terminal. Although in an actual um, uh, attacker perspective, you'd probably allow this to continue to run to get more information. Uh, we'll open up that capture packet, and then we're going to specify the Modbus TCP display filter, uh, MBTCP. Then we can go ahead and scroll down in order to locate that right coil command. the packet, we can review its contents and hex format, and even decode the values using Wireshark. export this particular tra uh, packet, which would be helpful uh, in case we're using it as a template for additional fuzzing, as seen in the episode prior to this. Now we open the packet in the hex editor. We can see the overhead, but more importantly, we can also see the Modbus TCP packet started off by the Modbus tra uh, transaction identifier. Another way to parse this is to go to modbus.rapidscada.net. Um, go ahead and select Modbus TCP and request, and go ahead and enter those bytes into the uh, into one of the right uh, commands that we saw previously. We'll go ahead and 
can parse this and see it's the right function coil and the output is on. If we went ahead and changed those uh, flag bits to nulls, we would see that the output value of that particular packet would be off. So now we're starting to understand um, the actual logic of the particular HTMI. Mhm. Understand. Leute, ich weiß ja nicht, wie es euch geht, aber ich verstehe ja gar nichts im Video, aber in kann sich ja mal capture, uh, we can see where those bits were signed uh, to be on uh, based upon hex FF. We can modify that in hex editor, review it in Wireshark. However, we would also need to change some of the, uh, the actual packet information itself uh, in order to replay it. Wo lang geht's denn? Ah, hier lang. Hm, schön viele so Creeper hier. So in the first hier. example, we performed a simple search and replace for the XML data being passed to the web switch. Similarly, we can inject data as well. Es sind viele vielleicht. Uh, for example, we'll be used Beef here, the browser exportation framework. Uh, when you open it up on the icon in Kali, it will give you the URL to go to. Uh, you can log in with Simple beef beef credentials. Tim. Hm? Wer heißt Tim, oder? Heißt das, heißt das wer heißt Tim? Um, our module to inject JavaScript and then give it the JavaScript URL um, of the actual beef hook. Nee, Budet? Äh, nee, Budet heißt the, uh, nicht heißen, ne? So. We can see that we have a hook. Ah, Bude, was heißt das nochmal? Uh, as soon as the engineering workstation. Uh, uh, ja, Budo, nehmen, oder? Ich nehme, ja, ja, Budo, also im Restaurant kann man das sagen, ne? Boah, Junge, sei mal, sei mal ruhig hier. Ich pack den Typen nicht. Ich pack, ich pack den Konten nicht, also nichts gegen den Typen, aber, ähm, ne? Was ist das denn für ein Graben, den ich hier gebaut habe? Ist der Creeper jetzt da auch reingelaufen? Nee, oder? Boah, das ist nicht so viel Rüstisch, das lese ich jetzt nicht. Ich kann da nicht ich kann daraus, glaube ich. We can run specific commands against the host. Oh, ich wollte essen. Here we're going to fingerprint the operating system. Execute the command. And view its output. is pretty fantastic. We're going to go ahead and specify a Windows prompt. Execute it and it will essentially prompt on the other side of the dashboard. Oh, this video is blocked. I should like to do it by or so. Hey, we need to enter credentials. Someone on the box may think it was a valid uh, prompt by the system. Enter their domain credentials. 
and we would collect it here um, through the browser. Now we have a legitimate credential to begin pivoting uh, deeper within the control system network, especially as control systems yeah, often have their own cool. domain. So absent to strong physical security, being able to reduce the attacker's ability to gain entrance into the facility and attach a device to a local LAN, there are some additional countermeasures that we can do in the cyber domain. Managed switches typically have more security capabilities embedded within them than dumb layer 2 switches. Simple improvements such as SMP alerting and larger CAM tables can yield benefits. Configure dynamic ARP inspection per VLAN to drop forged gratuitous ARP packets and log violations. And since you're doing all this additional oh. logging, you need to ensure log forwarding and setup. Ja so klar. Ich will immer, dass der, ich will immer, dass das fucking Skelett den Creeper tötet und ich versuche das immer irgendwie hinzukriegen. Jetzt, wo ich äh, nur das Gunpowder will, kriegst du eine blöde Music Disc. Das glaubst du ja wohl selber nicht. Alter, was ist mit mir? Ich bin der unfähigste Mensch, den es gibt. From these additional capabilities. Jetzt hätte ich den gerne mit meinem Looting-Schwert gekillt. Timo. Kto wird Timo? Rugna Kiwi. Ach, keine Ahnung. Configure VLAN ACLs to drop UDP packets delivered to UDP port 67. Configure port security. If you require DHCP for speedy recovery of a down device, then at a minimum, ensure you're alerted via SM SNMP trap upon the insertion of a new device. And of course, there's always the option to embrace end-to-end -end encryption. Hey, thanks everyone for viewing this episode. Uh, we appreciate if you please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, we'll be posting the slides uh, on GitHub. And as well, as, uh, as with all the other videos, our show notes are posted on our blog at hackmycontrolsystem.com. Thank you very much for viewing. Okay, ja, das war's dann mit dieser Episode. Ähm, haut rein.